But today we're going to be showcasing off the new Sacred Beast build. This is going into, of course, Master Rule 2020, as now we have that new update for April 1st. We're going to be showcasing off against a lot of different matchups over here. One is going to be pretty meta. Uh, this is going to be a Orcus variant, and this Orcus variant is very strong. I'm sure a lot of the guys have been locked out. You've probably seen it where they go ahead and use that carrier, and they go ahead and equip the Buster uh, Blader uh, little whelp guy and he's supposed to basically give you game against a lot of different decks and you will lose straight up and we've got a dingirsu uh to go ahead and deal with so it's got extra protection uh but yeah the little dragon buster destruction sword so no cards can be special from the extra deck uh via us but you know what's cool with this deck it doesn't care about an extra deck you can throw in a lot of different cards yeah you can throw an extravagance you don't need an extra deck for this and we're gonna just dunk on him over here because the new sacred beast we've been talking about it um so i'm curious to know if you guys think this will be meta or not obviously orcas variants have been meta for a very very long time and on top of that you basically get out boss monsters for free and on top of that with sacred beast awakening every single time that he summons something uh we're gonna be able to get all the life points which is really op now in this instance he's able to shuffle that card back um, but he can't get rid of any of the sacred beasts because this makes it so your opponent can't destroy them and then um, on top of that It has the effect of pot of greed, uh, which is awesome uh, So he's gonna go ahead and now attack into that monster and because of cerulean skyfire This card gives you a negate every single uh, turn if you as long as you control Haman to move a defense position And then on top of that once you uh, have one of your sacred beasts uh, Destroyed you or if it was it is it face up leaves the field uh, he just leaves the field at all. You just take no damage for the entire turn. So this guy over here, not going to be doing anything. We go ahead and hit him up with a young super poly. And then from there, we're going to be A-OK. -okay. And this card has a bonus effect where you can just make your opponent take a thousand extra bonus damage uh, for no reason. And uh, once again, we're going to be able to negate that with the Cerulean Skyfire. And then we've got Crackdown over here uh, to go ahead and stop one of his monsters because he obviously kind of needs this Orcus to kind of go off. But he ends up, I guess, banishing too many cards. And he's just like, you know, I can't deal with it. And he opened up good he had the babble uh, of course but uh, this this card is really good but let's go ahead and showcase it off against a lot of different other things over here i didn't actually just, just showcase off uh, the nordics now that we got one of the more meta decks out of the way nordics are an okay archetype uh i mean against the meta i would say they're not pretty good but they still happen to have some good cards up their sleeves like of course the link monster is actually pretty decent uh, again this is the new master rule so you don't really need to go for it before like you literally had to make this card every single time you wanted to make a play but unfortunately it only gives you one zone uh for the nordics but it's not like you can throw out multiple boss monsters in nordic in one turn but he's gonna go ahead and have this card over here and it becomes double so he has seven thousand and that's basically one of the like better options you can have against this but now we're gonna go ahead and see this so every time they summon a monster we're gonna be able to gain those uh, life points. We're gonna go ahead and take a lot more damage now because that card was left, but because of the Sacred Beast Awakening, again, every single time he's summoning all of these cards, we're gonna go ahead and heal up for that amount. And this is where this card really shows how great it can be. And then on top of that, we're gonna be able to add a continuous uh, trap from our Grave Rider to our hand every single time. And that's why uh, Crackdown is so great in this deck because we're able to go ahead and just utilize that effect. Now, it doesn't matter if you double that. Yo, the Raviel over here with 8,000 attack is just gonna, again, dunk on the opponents over here. But uh, let's go ahead and check out some more uh, replays. And let's go ahead and check it out up against Mirror Match because this is kind of an interesting Mirror Match because there's a lot of cards um, that would be uh, bricks over here in the deck, that's for sure. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people mixing in some other splash tech for the deck. And over here we see the uh, dangers over here. And the dangers will add a lot more consistency to the deck. Plus, sometimes some of the cards in the graveyard, you can banish them for other effects as well. Whether you're adding the Fallen Paradise, aka Pot of Greed in the deck. It does make it so much better. Now he's going to go ahead and splash someone uh, Haman from the hand, then go ahead and draw two. Skyfire over here. Again, excellent card. Um, but as far as the Sacred Beasts go, unfortunately, Araya requires you to play too much cards specific for it to be like viable. The best cards are really uh, Raviel and Haman. Haman being able to also be that card that gives you those negates with Cerulean Skyfire, whereas Araya is just... Araya is cool for flashy plays. I was in like, I'm going to get, you know... 
stupid amounts of attack where it, it's just cool to do for the sake of doing it. Uh, but in reality, I think if Sacred Beasts ever become meta, the meta would definitely be Haman uh, as well as Raviel. There's really no point going for that. But now that this card's destroyed, we can now deal with the other cards uh, because Fallen Paradise also has that effect where you're unable to target them. But you guys got to see the crackdown over here, snatch to the monster, and then from there, Unchained over there is out and then um, you can target a card in the field and destroy it And when a monster is destroyed by battle you can target a card in the field and destroy it So like this is how you're gonna be able to OTK in the deck It's not too often that you'll be making this card But occasionally the extra does get used because these guys are just basically boss monsters and you're just trying to negate stuff But with this card I was even thinking because you couldn't just run multiple copies of crackdown and recycle them anyways uh, You can just start taking your opponent's stuff and at that point I was thinking extravagance would be great in the extra deck, but I'll also give you guys the deck profile as well for this deck because I think a lot of people are interested in just seeing what's new here uh, in the game, and I think that this deck has some potential. Again, it's one of those like fan favorites that's actually good, which I think, uh, again, it's an easy deck to play too. Once you learn the ins and outs of it, which is basically activate all the cards that you have, the dangers make it so there's a little bit more play. You also have more uh, room for your extra deck uh, to go ahead and actually make things. But going to Star Yudra is excellent because the main goal of the deck, uh, if you're uh, trying to go ahead and go off, is have Cerulean Skyfire. And then this card basically protects most of your stuff. And he even gets lucky with the Cup of Ace. So we basically got Pot of Greed over there. But with the Sacred Beast Awakening, not that it doesn't anything against this deck um for the most part there is i guess there's there's a time one of the time lord has actual attack right uh then there's cephalon uh which i guess if he summoned that and got the other sandy on then he would just heal up for all the attack anyway so it doesn't matter jar of greed uh, he's probably playing the recycle i've seen a lot of people try it out jar of greed plus the jar recycle which is actually what you're supposed to do i think it's just too slow uh, for most people to make good use out of it because the point is to go ahead and banish the jar of greed and then you always have extra traps uh, to go ahead and banish uh, but it's only maybe viable magical musketeers i've been trying it too just for the gameplay it, it's just too inconsistent uh, because anything too slow is just going to get bodied in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, if you're playing against most meta things but here is the deck profile. I want to give a shout out to my boy DJ for hooking me up with the gameplay as well as the deck profile for his Sacred Beast build because I liked it a lot. I thought it was really good. I haven't seen this use of Crackdown. And then on top of that, again, remember Sacred Beast Awakening every single time. If it's only control level 10 or higher, uh, or, or just level 10 monster, which is everything in the archetype except for like the, the non-sacred beasts um you're gonna be able to add a continuous trap from your graveyard to your hand so you get infinite uh, copies of this as long as you use it link up with it because again you're using your opponent's stuff uh it could be quite great so uh we got raviel over here the this card is kind of for flashy plays too where you're able to one shot your opponent sometimes you get a uh where is it um you can discard this card target Raviel, and then it doubles its attack, and it can attack everything, so it comes 8,000 and attacks everything. Yeah, that will definitely give you some really cool plays. And then we have three copies of Haman, uh, two copies of Raviel, and then uh, one copy of the uh, Darkest Diablos. This is more so utilized for link plays, but it's still not a bad card. Um, and then we've got uh, the Danger Nessie, two copies of the Dark Summoning Beast, two copies of Mothman, one copy of Suchinoko, one copy of Draglope, three copies of the Dark Beckoning Beast, uh, three copies of the Chaos Summoning Beast, two copies of Alert, one copy of One for One, one copy of Foolish, three copies of Super Poly. Uh, this can really help deal with those boards that are kind of unbeatable. Um, maybe Nibiru could be a great option as well, or you can throw in more copies of this because... Uh, at the end of the day, your monsters will always get over your opponent's monsters. Even Dark Ruler No More could maybe be an option, but this can deal with the problem immediately. And because this deck can OTK quite fast, you don't have to worry about not being able to attack that turn, so this is a great option as well. Uh, but I was mentioning, I think if you wanted to, uh, I'll mention the extra deck, because you can see maybe these cards are his actual side deck, but I know a lot of people also throw in cards that they were kind of testing out here, which I... I absolutely appreciate when you guys do this because it lets me see your deck process because I do the same thing. Um, but then we also have two copies of Cerulean Skyfire and then three copies of the uh, Salmon Spirits. This is one which lets you just add one and then uh, on top of that, uh, once per turn you can discard a card to spell summon a fiend monster with zero attack uh, from your uh, graveyard. And once per turn you control level 10, 
Uh, monster, you can add a continuous spell from your graveyard to hand, so you can recycle a lot of the cards if they were to get rid of them, uh, like Sword and Skyfire. And then Fallen Paradise, no brainer. And then uh, we've got Impermanence, uh, two copies of Crackdown, and two copies of Sacred Beast Awakening, and Skill Drain, which those that can really utilize because you really don't need the effects. Um, there was a few times where you got to see in Mirror Match the Ravio special showing the tokens, but that effect, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, you can use it for link plays, but overall, it's, it's going to hurt your opponent a lot more. I like this tech with the Skill Drain over here for sure and then for the extra deck we got the, of course our super poly talker it's like the uh Predator planet triff and then we got starving venom fusion dragon mud dragon number 35 then we have hakai uh which is the unchained abomination and then we got the boral sword uh sorry yudra block luster unicorn phoenix cerberus uh barricade blocker uh ip mask arena which can make your things uh immune to being destroyed by opponent's card effects link Kariba and al mirage and then for cards that he was testing and or is his actual side deck we got two guys in the bureau um we got the uh, ravio this is actually good for mirror match, uh, just so you can run over things. And then Dragon's Topelia. Then we got Mind Control, Dark Room, or more. Three copies of Called, three copies of Twin Twister. And then we got uh, There Can Only Be One, another copy of Crackdown, and Solemn Judgment. But for um, cards, if you want to, I'm just going to move these out of the way. Um, I think that if you want to run Extravagance, it's totally viable. And I would probably drop some of these cards. Like the card, like this is sometimes good against very specific archetypes, uh, where of course uh, they can't, uh, where it says, uh, if it's used for a seven or higher, which you, of course you'll use, they can't target with card effects and it can't be destroyed. Some decks just can't deal with this. You ever play Magical Musketeers? If they don't play the card that that has 2500 attack which no one plays and the double attack for 5000 once this card gets enough attack like it's just very 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 difficult to deal with um let me tell you that's for sure because i've been playing that deck trying to get gameplay but it's been a while uh but uh, nonetheless there are certain times where this becomes absolutely amazing but it's it's kind of seldom and i feel like you can definitely make uh some extra deck i mean this did see some play this I mean, most of these cards have so much attack anyways. I feel like this is a win harder card. I think these are the most important cards. And when you run Extravagance, a lot of times people just double and triple up on certain cards. And uh, that could be an option for you if you want to go ahead and throw an Extravagance in this deck. Because I can definitely see people making use out of it. I think Unicorn definitely double though. But for the most part, these are the important ones. These is what I consider less important. I, to an extent to this one. But there are a lot of cards where you just go straight into it. Uh, because some of the cards will linger on the board. And you don't want that. Because they don't have very much attack. <laughs> uh, especially if they get their effects stopped. Or whatever the case may be. But... I think this deck has a lot of potential uh, for the game, especially if, you know, the next ban list comes around and it nerfs everything that's popular. But, I mean, you guys saw it up against Orcus. It doesn't need the extra deck, which is great. Uh, and on top of that, um, your monsters are immune to a lot of stuff because Fallen Paradise basically protects you. And then the same thing with uh, the Seven Spirits. You're going to be able to add and recycle a lot of your stuff. Sometimes the only problem with this deck is Bricks, but, of course, you happen to have the dangers to go ahead and try to make this card. And I think this is another card where I'd run maybe double or triple if you do Extravagance as well for the most part you only need one but it's just for the early brick hands where you can't do anything um because you know that that's the main problem with this deck is is, is the consistency and again extravagance would help out with that but anyways thanks again dj for hooking us up with your uh, gameplay as well as your build if you guys would like to make suggestions let me know in the down below in the comment section below but if you're watching this on youtube thanks for tuning in guys uh hit subscribe turn on that bell if you want to see maybe an updated version of this because i think uh, this will definitely be seeing a lot more play. I've seen a lot within the past couple weeks, and it's just because people want to try it out against the newer uh, archetypes, and it does definitely have a chance. And if you guys want to send me any, any replays, just like my boy DJ, feel free to do it by saying it to Asian's replays at gmail.com. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one. I'm out. Peace.